Grab your songbooks. Grab your songbooks. What song are we singing first, little boss? 776. 776. Amen. 776. He has a one behind that number. That was a pretty good year. Amen. 776. 776. 776 in your songbooks. Once you find your place, would you please stand? And we'll sing together this song. I think Brother Bob's got another song for us as well after that. But we'll start out with 776.
theme for this year that I was planning and preparing, had the scripture, had an outline, had it all planned out, and uh, I can't remember who was in uh, Brother Bob's Sunday school class. Brother, I really do listen to you. <laughs> Sometimes God gives me something while listening to you, okay? I can't remember if it was in Brother Bob's Sunday school class or if it was when we had, a, uh, had uh, somebody here preach. I can't remember exactly when it was, but the Lord just completely changed that thought at the last minute, really literally in the beginning of December, and uh, completely changed it and in just a very brief, very quick moment, not only gave me the scripture, the thought, uh, the theme, and, and also an outline to that theme, all within just a few moments of time, and as the Lord as, as the Lord enabled, I try to develop that that thought, the theme, and make sure that we get everything on paper. And I did not have a clue what to go on the banners. Didn't have a, even a, remotely an idea. And between uh, Miss Betsy and my wife, they were able to Miss um, Betsy training as in her transition, my wife to be able to do banners and things. Uh, between the two of them, we had a couple different directions we were thinking about going uh, with the banners, and uh, just. It, just kind of all worked itself out. And somebody came up, I'm not sure exactly whose idea it was, somebody came up with an idea for the pictures as well. I said, that, yes, that's exactly, that's, I knew that, that's what I was thinking about the whole time. And uh, I really wasn't, but that was exactly what, uh, as soon as they said that, that was, yes, that's exactly, ministry pictures. And so that's what that is, it's not to highlight the people, that's to highlight ministry, amen? And uh, even, even though there's a picture up there of Aubrey, that's not just to highlight of you, uh, sweet lady, that's, that's your ministry of Loving on people as they come through those doors. They've been welcoming folks in. It's ministry. And, uh, and she's, she's serving God in that picture. And they caught that snap. And, and uh, it's a blessing. And so if you if you got left out, if you weren't in there, we weren't, we weren't trying to just get everybody. We were trying to get lots of pictures of ministry. And so I don't think anybody is going to feel left out of there. But if you do, please. Uh, there was nothing personal about that. We were just trying to get shots of, of ministry in action uh, for this year's theme. Colossians chapter number 3, verse number 18, I have you stand up uh, this time, and actually stand up, right, last uh, this morning's service, I just went ahead and read, prayed, let y'all uh, sit down, and, um, my brain's worked a little bit better, I think maybe, maybe coffee, I don't know, I don't know what it was, but uh, uh, I'm maybe thinking a little bit clear right now, maybe, maybe not, Colossians chapter number 3, and verse number 18, Colossians chapter 3, and verse number 18, the Bible says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things your masters, according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not as men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve Lord Christ. Amen. Think about this passage of scripture here in context. We're talking about the home. We're talking about work. We're talking about many, many aspects of our life. I do believe that the application of this theme goes, goes uh, uh, beyond the home and into ministry and into every part of our life because the Apostle Paul certainly was broad uh, in, in his measure, as we'll see here in just a little bit. Uh, yes, in context, he's talking about the home and workplace and in our everyday lives, but uh, this goes much broader than just, just uh, well, this actually really does cover almost everything in our lives, amen. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer and we'll get into this, this thought today. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your goodness to us, and Lord, as we uh, look to your passage of scripture here, and specifically this verse, verse 23, uh, for a challenge and uh, for a charge this evening, uh, I beg you, God, that you please enable me to say those things that would be helpful and edifying to this body of believers. And uh, we just we just want to thank you for what you've been doing in our church this year. Uh, help us to get excited. Help us to get stirred. Holy Spirit of God, convict us uh, in those areas in which we're falling short. And uh, Father, help us uh, to be recommitted to you. Help us to see revival. Help us to see a fresh stirring uh, in our hearts and in our lives that we have a, a desire to get closer to you. We have a desire to serve you uh, with the fervency that you deserve uh, and that you desire. We want to thank you in advance for what you're going to do this evening. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Man, you may be seated. Thank you so much. I love, I, the New Year's is, is so fun. Amen. I love New Year's. And, you know, I understand that new commitments should be made every week. Amen. I, you know, we should not wait for the New Year's to make new commitments with 
God pricks our heart about something, it ought to be a the response ought to be immediate. Amen. We say, you know what? That's a one at the end of January. You know what, Lord? That is wonderful. I'm putting that on my list of New Year's resolutions for next year. That's not that's not God's plan for our lives. Amen. We should uh, and when the Holy Spirit of God speaks to our heart about something we're falling short in or something that needs to be added to, the, to our lives, the way we live, that ought, that ought to be an immediate response of obedience. And so please don't misunderstand that we should not be putting off uh, for just a greater New Year celebration uh, to have more resolutions to be able to add to the list. But I do love the New Year's. It's, there is kind of a, there's an there's a, a excitement to the fresh start. Amen. And uh, these themes we started just back in 2013, started doing themes. We were here a couple years before that, um, and uh, I've enjoyed them. They've been I've really they've been fun to they've been fun to pray about. Some of the years I've had uh, some of the deacons uh, do the, the majority of picking out and, and choosing. And some of the years I've prayed and, and chose the themes, and, and uh, it, it's really been fun. It's an exciting time, amen. We get to we get to look back at, at previous themes and. And previous years, and, and we get to evaluate how we've done uh, with the, in, the, in the challenge for the, this previous year. We get to look back and, and consider, uh, did, it, did it help us? Did it grow us? Did it strengthen us? Did we get closer to the Lord as a result of, of that particular uh, emphasis in our lives? We get to look back to those previous themes and evaluating how we did. We get to uh, look to the present to experience the excitement of a fresh challenge. So listen, man, if that fresh conviction on a uh, that ought to excite the believer. Amen? Uh, I, I, I'm glad, I'm thankful uh, that uh, that uh, we serve a living God. I'm thankful that we serve a God who sent His Comforter, uh, who sent the Holy Spirit of God to stir us up when we need some stirring. Amen? Uh, I'm thankful for the conviction of the Holy Spirit of God. I'm thankful that when I'm not where I'm supposed to be, God lets me know that. Aren't you glad for that tonight? Amen? Uh, that's a blessing to me. I, I'm thankful for uh, the, the, the fresh challenge of the Holy Spirit of God. I love it when uh, when he when he brings something to light uh, that that I need personally and that we need as a church, it, 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 it stirs me, it excites me, it fires me up, amen. And, and I love that fresh challenge. I love the fresh conviction uh, of the new theme. Now I understand that there's a a, a lot of that. Listen, if we only focus on this one thing for the year, we we might miss out, amen. I believe there's going to be a lot of things. Uh, throughout this year that God wants us to work on. There's going to be a lot of areas, lots of scripture uh, that needs to be covered, needs to be gone through, needs to be applied to uh, to our lives. I understand that, uh, but but these things are just just an extra part, extra area, an area of, of uh, extra emphasis that I believe is needed, uh, that, that I believe will be good for us uh, to apply to our life. Amen. But I, I we, we get to enjoy the looking to the present uh, for for that excitement, uh, uh, that excitement of that fresh challenge. We also get to look into the future uh, with anticipation of what could happen if we really apply this this theme, this Bible truth uh, to our lives this year. Amen. Could you imagine what could take place if God's people, the vast majority, if not all, of God's people that make up Green Meadow Bible Baptist Church? Church of Council of Michigan, could you imagine uh, what could take place if all of God's people just got to a place where they got surrendered about this thing and doing all things heartily as to the Lord? Right. Amen. Could you just imagine? I mean, just think about that. The, the, the excitement as we anticipate what could happen if, if, if God would move in our hearts and stir us. And listen, I, I shouldn't be an if there. I know God's going to move in our hearts. Will we respond? To that movement is really the question. Yeah, uh, the response to the Holy Spirit's challenge, uh, the response to the to His charge from Scripture uh, to this regard. Amen. Uh, let me. I, I ask you. Normally, I can just give one person candy bars uh, for this brother David. Usually, wins it every single year. Amen. And he's probably. Have you been working on this brother David? You got all of them. I'm not going to have you do it this year, but do you have all of them? I so, yeah. Amen. I, I'll, I, I'm just going to go one at a time, and you can raise your hand, and you remember. Who, who knows 2013, that very first thing we did? Does anybody remember that first theme, 2013? Anybody remember that one, Pastor Springer? By the grace of God, we get to. No, you missed it. You missed it, brother. All right. You got it, brother? <laughs> Redeeming the time. Redeeming the time was the first one. Redeeming the time. Uh, Pastor Springer, do you know 2014's? By the grace of God, we get to. By the grace of God, we get to. Amen. And uh, we, we, the 2013, we focused on redeeming the time. And listen, I hope that you're still redeeming the time. Amen. By the grace of God, we get to. I think that was maybe my one of my favorite themes and favorite thoughts uh, for the year. Because I think sometimes we get to a place where we, we just think that... Uh, 
that there's a lot of have to in the Christian life, amen? And uh, yes, there is obligation. Sure, we can argue obligation. We can argue imperative in the scripture. Uh, but it is by God's grace. And because of his grace, we, we get to uh, do the things we do. Because in all honesty, we're, if we're saved, if we're saved, uh, it was, it, 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 we're, we're, we're secure eternally. Amen? And so if you think about it that way, if it was not up to our ability, if it was not up to our merit, everything we do is by God's grace. Amen? We get to serve God. Uh, number 2015s. Anybody remember 2015s? Amen? 2015s. Anybody remember that one? The next year? I mean, this is an important one. Brother David? Um, for the furtherance of the gospel. Yeah, amen. For the furtherance of the gospel. Super important. Amen? We're really focused on soul winning that year, personal evangelism. Obviously something we need to continue to do. How about 2016? Anybody remember 2016's theme? Anybody remember that one? Brother David's got this one. Uh, life abundant. Yes, life more abundantly. Amen. That's a, and that's you know that's important, uh, important in our life. I think a lot of times God's people they, we miss out we miss out uh, on uh, on God's blessing uh, and His abundance. And it, uh, abundance doesn't always mean things. Amen. And in fact, much of the time. God's abundance don't mean things. Yeah. Amen? Right. Uh, and uh, we miss out, though. We miss out on that abundant life. We miss out on the, enjoying the victory. Uh, oftentimes, God's certainly given us that opportunity. Uh, how about 2017? Now, we're only talking a couple years ago, okay? Brother Austin, what was 2017? I desire thee. Yeah, amen. I desire thee. Focus that year was just making sure that you're desiring to save, amen? Uh, that was, uh, I think Brother Bob helped me on that one. I can't remember if that was Brother Bob or Brother Lynn. I think it was Brother Bob helped me on that one. Uh, I desire thee. Amen. I think I actually had both of these help me on that one that year. And uh, I think they both gave me some scripture that would uh, support that thought of I desire thee. Amen. And uh, 2018, anybody got 2018s? Young people, any young people got 2018s? Lydia? No, that was 2019s. 2018? Who's got 2018s? Young people? Come on, you guys got better, better memory, better brains than us. Anybody? Anybody? Brother, Brother David, what was 2018? Uh, give him preeminence. Give him preeminence. Amen. Put him first. And then Lydia got 2019. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. Amen. And so as we, I, I hope that we have an opportunity to go back through those. And uh, if you if you, if you learn from Brother David, you write those things down somewhere. Amen. You have them right there in front of you for next year. All right? Next year, I may offer candy bars for it. Amen. And uh, it, it, might be, it might be worth having those. Uh, having those uh, those things there, but redeeming the time, uh, redeeming the time by the grace of God, uh, we get to for the further all all of these all of these themes this last year have been a, uh, been a help to to me personally. I think they've been a help. They've been a help to you. But I, as we reflect on last year's theme, how did you do last year? Amen. How did you do with last year's theme? Uh, the emphasis on the Bible, the emphasis on, uh, on being being reminded every time you came into this church auditorium, looking up there, yes. That's the book for me. Uh, how did you do with the with the theme from last year? How did you do in God's Word last year? Did you locate it? Did you learn it? Did you live it? Amen. Uh, was that uh, something that was regular in your life? As as I, I say every single year, and I think it's something that uh, is it, it bears repeating. It's it's I think it's a good thing for it to be repetitious in a way. Just because we're moving into a new theme or uh, moving over to a new theme does not mean that we dismiss. The old themes, amen. I, I hope that we're still redeeming the time. I hope that that's something that's kind of was was stuck in our head, and and uh, and that we, we we allowed it to be drove home in our heart. That's something that we live by, and we continue to try to redeem the time because it hasn't changed anymore. Amen. The truth hasn't changed. Uh, for the grace of God, I hope that we're enjoying this wonderful truth that by God's grace we get to. Amen. I hope that you live every every day of your life with the joy in your heart that what you're doing for the Lord is something you get to do, not something that you have to do, and it's by God's grace that you get to enjoy it, amen? Mm -hmm. I hope that we're continuing in our personal evangelism, realizing the importance of the furtherance of the gospel, amen? I hope that we're enjoying life more abundantly. Oh, we miss out. We miss out when we get so worldly-minded. We miss out when we uh, allow ourselves to become attached, too attached uh, to this world, amen? Uh, and realizing that, God, that, that the Lord has a has an abundant life out there there for those uh, who would want it. Amen. I, I hope that we desire God. I hope that you're still desiring the Lord. I hope that's something regular uh, in your lives. I hope that in your personal time of devotion that you are uh, uh, have a desire in your heart to draw closer and closer to Him, desiring uh, Him to be in your life. I hope that you're giving Him the preeminence. And, and yes, I hope that the Bible is still the book for you. Amen. I hope that, that this year's helped you. Uh, but, but let's add to it this year. Amen. Whatsoever you do, 
Do it heartily as to the Lord. Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord. For, for God's people, I believe that there is a real temptation to become content doing just enough uh, to get by in ministry and in our Christian life. As we looked at that passage of Scripture, we saw the role of husband, wife, and, and co-worker, and father, parent. And we can argue in all those areas, there's some things that we can do, we can get by uh, in those particular areas of living. Uh, where, where we could keep people off of our back. I could, listen, I, could be, I could be a good enough husband, amen? Uh, I could be a good enough dad to my children. Uh, I could be a good enough pastor uh, to this church. And, and, uh, but, you know, that's not what God desires, amen? Right. And, and certainly not what He deserves. And so I hope that, uh, I, I hope that you know, God's people, we have a real temptation to become content doing just enough uh, to get by. It's important that we're reminded that our Lord deserves better than just enough. Amen. Amen. Listen, we, we look at uh, the, the, the Apostle Paul, we look at many Christians, and we see the Apostle Paul testifies in Romans uh, uh, chapter number 12 uh, that, that all that is required and desired of us, uh, that's just a reasonable service. Yeah. It's just reasonable for what the Lord's done for us. What God has done for you and what God has done for me, it's just, it's only reasonable that in all things, uh, in all things, He, uh, that, that, that we are heartily, uh, as we do all things for Him. Amen? And the Apostle Paul was not only used of God to pen these words, uh, but really his life was an example of just that. Amen? The Apostle Paul, testifying of his sufferings, not bragging, not to brag, but to make a that point, he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, verse starting in verse number 24, he says, Of the Jews, five times I received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. And the night and the day I have been in the deep, I, uh, in journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the, in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily in the care of all the churches, the burden and the concern for all the churches that he had helped to establish and God had used him to, uh, to see established. Amen. His life was fully devoted to the work of God. I believe that we can say that not only did the Apostle Paul testify and proclaim this truth that's inspired by the Lord, but he lived out this truth uh, that was inspired by the Lord. The Apostle Paul was devoted to the work of God. I believe we can look at his life and we can find somebody who did all things heartily as to the Lord. He was willing and he did give his life serving the King of Kings. You say, Pastor, but he was an apostle. But he was an apostle, uh, born out of, out of due time, uh, as, that, as that apostle who saw Christ after the fact and that road to Damascus. And, and uh, you know, he was special. And so you can't hold us to that same standard. Dear friend, I tell you, I believe with all my heart that everything that the apostle Paul was, by God's grace, so are we to be. Uh, by His grace also. Amen. Yeah. I believe, you know, listen, I understand the sign gifts are done. I understand that there's uh, no need for those uh, anymore and that those have been wrapped up at the completion of the, 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 the New Testament uh, Scripture. We have, we have that thing that is greater. We have what we need here uh, in text. We have the, the, the proof and the truth and everything we need to study and get close to the Lord. We don't need the extra sign gifts, uh, if you will. Uh, but but uh, all that the Apostle Paul uh, did in serving God and planting churches and loving people and, and spreading the seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere he went. I believe with all of my heart that's God's expectation for every morning and believer. Amen. When we get saved, God wants us to be changed. Right. God wants us to be different. Yeah. God has given us all the enabling to do so. He, 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 he allows the Holy Spirit of God to take up residence in the life of that believer, giving us all the enabling, all the power to, uh, to allow our lives to be different for the cause of Christ. He wants us to be changed. He wants us to be confident. He wants our lives, he wants us to be able to say, hey, listen, if you follow me, I'm going in the direction of the Lord. If you follow me, we're, we're, I'm, I'm living for God, and, and you'll be able to do right as well. The Apostle Paul had that confidence. He wants us to be correct.
courageous. Amen. He wants us, as we talked about this morning, He wants us to be able to run toward the need of people and the glory of God rather than from the, the difficulties that come with a life of service to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He wants us to be courageous. He desires that we be compassionate. Amen. The, the, our Savior was certainly a picture of that compassion as He looked over that multitude. But the Apostle Paul also demonstrated that compassion. And, and, and uh, dear, uh, dear sir, dear man, dear believer uh, of our Savior Jesus Christ, God's plan, God's expectation for your life is that you uh, would be compassionate uh, as a Christian. I believe He also has a desire not only for us to be changed and confident, courageous and compassionate, but He also has a desire that each and every one of us would be contrite. Amen. He has a desire that we'd be humble, that we that we realize that it's not all about us and it's all about God. Right. Amen. But often our testimony reveals that we're camouflaged, comfortable, and complacent. This would be a blessing if the Lord would really get a hold of our heart regarding this matter of living our lives heartily as to the Lord. Oh, I, I believe God can do great things in this church if, if He could get, if, uh, get the attention of His people. If He could work in the hearts of His people and help them Help them to live lives that are heartily as the Lord. With the Lord's enabling tonight, I'd like, to, like for us to consider this outline here in, in, in this text. We find in Colossians chapter 3, verse 23, as I preach on our 2020 theme. Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord. First thing we see, first thing we see in this text is we see the measure. We see the measure. Whatsoever ye do. Look, many of God's people do some things heartily as to the Lord. Amen. But unfortunately, there are few uh, who are just plain sold out and surrendered to the whatsoever you do. Right. Look, the measure of God's expectation is that in every area of your life, and in everything you do, and in whatsoever you find yourself doing, every activity that you participate in, uh, every role that you play, whether you're a husband, a wife, a child, a worker, uh, whether it's in your ministry, uh, whether it's in your personal evangelism, that it all be done heartily as the Lord. That's what God's plan is for yeah. believers. Listen, I know that that word whatsoever seems simple enough to understand, but in reality, I believe it is it is. It is been found to be very difficult to put into practice. The blessing is, uh, is that by God's grace, whatever we do can be done heartily as the Lord. He's enabled us, and listen, if it's His command, then that command comes with His enabling. If He expects us to do things heartily, oh, then bless His holy name, we can do things heartily. Amen. But this takes purposeful living. This takes thinking before you act. This takes, this takes praying uh, before we act. Sure, it's uh, a, a, a great expectation, uh, but, but or a, a, in, in the sense that it's difficult, great uh, in its size, great in its scope, uh, but this is the measure that God expects. Would you commit this year, uh, would, you, would you surrender to the Lord this year to purposefully uh, consider every area of your life and make sure that it is done all heartily as to the Lord? We see the measure. The second thing we see in this text, we, we also see the mark. We got to do it heartily. The Bible says do it heartily. Uh, Webster's 1828 Dictionary defines that word heartily as from the heart, with all the heart, with sincerity. Now I understand that, that, uh, that, our, uh, that our, our labor without the Lord's blessing is vain. I understand that. But, uh, but God blesses effort done heartily. Amen. There are, there are many things that we do with our heart that are for our own benefit. Yeah. Uh, Brother John, I think you're on to something there. Well, he was testifying just a little bit ago. Uh, there's a lot of times that we'll do things heartily, as in go to work when we're sick, uh, go to work when maybe we don't feel quite as quite as good, or when the weather's not quite that great, or or this or that, the other thing, other things, and we might find an excuse to not do what God's expected us to do. Amen. There's a lot of things in our lives. There are a lot of things. And I'm not, and listen, you better not be looking piously at uh, Brother Jonathan, amen, because uh, we're all guilty of that same thing, amen. Yeah. yeah. There are many things that we do with our heart that are for our benefit. If, if money's involved, we work heartily. If, if there's some reward of, of pleasure or fun, we will perform heartily. 
Now I know that's a, that's a sad testimony, but the, the, the fact of the matter is, it, it's a true testimony. Many of God's people, and, and listen, I'm not poking at any particular person in, in here that I know of that's battling with this or anything like that. Uh, I believe that this is general, really, across all of uh, our country. I believe our country and God's people in our country have become very apathetic. And I believe God's working in many local churches out there today, and, and God is stirring local churches. God is still seeing souls saved. Uh, but it's unfortunate that there are many local churches across our land today uh, that, that, have, uh, that have become apathetic in their ministries, uh, and, and they are uh, they, they are carrying this sad testimony. So I'm not picking on any, any individual here whatsoever, because I don't know what you're battling with today, uh, but I do hope that the Holy Spirit of God is saying, I'm picking on you today, uh, that you'd that you respond, amen, and say, yeah, I'm done with this half-hearted service to God. I'm done being a half-hearted husband. I'm done being a half-hearted wife, a half-hearted child, a half-hearted uh, steward of, of, of the monies that God has given me as, a, as an employee, as a worker. I'm done being a half-hearted ministry worker. I'm going to serve God with all my heart. Amen. So many times, I'll see more sincerity and perseverance in the secular lives of God's people than what I see in the church house. And that's a, that's a bad testimony, amen? Listen, if our church is going to get off this plateau that we've been on, not this time, we just need to be, we need to be for real. God's been good to our church. We have a sweet spirit in our church, amen? When somebody, when somebody asks me, how's your church going? I say, man, we have a sweet spirit in our church. Listen, I can't, I can't testify that we're just that we're, that we're out there uh, seeing souls walk down the aisle saved every week and folks getting born again and the baptismal water stirred and, and bus routes started. I can't, I can't testify that. And, and so I certainly don't say anything negative about our church. But I can say, I can say, praise God, we have a wonderful spirit at the church. Amen. But we got to go past that spirit of unity. We got to get back. We got to keep going. We got to go beyond just having a sweet spirit at the church and being friendly to those that come in and, and, and get off this plateau and that we've been on for a couple of years. And, and we need to, if we're going to be able to do that, uh, if we're going to uh, take, if we're going to get off that plateau, I mean, it's going to take God's people uh, serving in their ministries, uh, serving in their personal lives with all their heart, trusting that God will give, will give the grace for us to be fruitful. Yes. Like I said, it's 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 uh, it is all up to God for His provision. Mm -hmm. Amen. Listen, I don't want to, we're not we're not taking credit for any of the provision, right? There is absolutely nothing that we that we are going to do. That is going to bring the increase. He provides the increase. But I believe that he will not bless and enable half-hearted ministries. Right. right. Amen. We need, to, we need to make sure that we're preparing for the Sunday schools and classes with all of our heart. I, I have a, I, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say this because I my Sunday school teacher, I know, I know plans and prepares. Amen. And so uh, I don't know what any of the other Sunday school classes do. But I'll tell you this: if you're planning and preparing the morning of shame. Right. Amen. If you're not praying for, if you're not planning for, if you're not studying up for uh, the, the, the lesson for that next week, uh, if you're just simply going through, uh, going, and listen, I, the curriculum is wonderful. I use it. You ought to use it if you have the opportunity. There's some good curriculums out there. Listen, if you're just reading through these curriculums uh, to, to get the job done for the day so you can say, look, my job's done. I was here. I was faithful. I did it. Listen, that is a, that is a sad, sad testimony. We will never grow uh, in this church if we don't apply that wholehearted service in a Sunday school classes. Amen. Amen. We need to prepare our special music with all our heart. Hey, you've heard me say this before. Listen, I understand there's times where we have to kind of throw something together uh, last minute because uh, of a change in schedule, sickness, and vacation. I understand that there's going to be times where you don't get the opportunity to practice and prepare. Uh, but I tell you, uh, shame on us if we if we know for weeks that we're going to be singing something and we put it off for the last couple days to start throwing something together. We just open up that book and we say, ah, uh, this little light of mine. We're going to see that one today. That, that'll work. Hey, if you don't spend it, if you, I, I hope that you would expect that I would spend time praying before I preach. Right. Amen. I hope, I hope that you would expect from me to, uh, to put a little bit of time into uh, studying and preparing before I come up and, and, and deliver a challenge from God's Word uh, to you. Amen? And, and listen, I, I've got to have that same expectation for all of our ministries. Amen? Hey, make sure we're preparing for our uh, music. And, and uh, listen, I, we, we need to clean and maintain this building uh, with all of our heart. Amen. Amen? We have a wonderful cleaning crew, and I'm so glad. I think we take for granted sometimes to be able to come in here uh, and have everything.
everything just, just done. Amen. Seats in order, uh, books where they're supposed to be, things clean, trash is empty, bathroom smelling pretty nice. Can you imagine somebody actually makes that boy's bathroom smell nice every <laughs> week? I'm telling you. And we take it for granted. I know we do. Amen. Uh, but listen, don't just do it just to get you to get the job done for the day. Amen. I'm making, making it so that we need, we need some we need some men. I can't reply. I'm just the same two fellas every time. We need to get some men and come in here and say, hey, look, we need to fix these lights. And look, I'll, I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to make sure I take care of that. I'm not only going to, uh, I'm not going to only put towards put towards it, but I'm going to put some labor towards it as well. Amen. We need some folks to go around and say, hey, look, we got some windows that are leaking some air. We got some uh, some rod on the building that needs to be cared for. I walk around and find some needs and don't come back to me and say, hey, Pastor, I got a list of needs we have. Amen. Go through and start fixing some of those things. Amen. Amen. And go through and start patching up some of those things. Find an area uh, to, to work out. Hey, God's given us a wonderful building. You know, every preacher we've ever had, you know, one of the first things they say when they come to our church, God has given you all a beautiful building. Right. Amen. And it's true. Amen. I've seen some other churches that are that are either uh, church plants or uh, or maybe even been in the same building for a long period of time. And, and God has been good to us. And I'm not dogging those buildings. I'm thankful. And I know they're thankful for whatever the Lord has given them. I'm not dogging. Uh, I don't care if it's a storefront. Uh, amen. With all windows down the, down the front that haven't been covered up yet. And they're preaching the gospel and having worship. That's a blessing. Amen. It's a, that's a beautiful building too. But, but listen, I think sometimes we take for granted all that we have on these grounds and in this property. All right. we, need to, we need to maintain it uh, with all of our heart. Amen. Uh, we, need to, we need to love and to, and, and to nurture the babies in the nursery with all of our heart. Listen, I don't know what goes on in the nursery. I, I don't I don't ever I don't ever audit that class. Uh, Miss Tamara, I don't ever go sit in there and say, you know what, y'all could do this. And I'm not I'm not doing that. Amen. Uh, but but I, I hope I hope that our, our nursery workers, and I'm probably preaching to the choir here, amen. That's uh, the un, unsung heroes of Green Meadow Bible Baptist Church, amen. Those uh, those ladies that work in the nursery. Uh, but listen, I hope our nursery workers are doing that with all their heart. Right. Out there loving on those babies. Out there encouraging those babies. I hope that the, those, those babies' first memories uh, going back to the nursery are sweet and wonderful memories of somebody who loved them and somebody who nurtured them and somebody who cared for them with, with, with a passionate heart as unto the Lord. Amen? And we need those bus we need to, these, these, uh, we need to run these bus routes with all of our heart. Amen. Amen. We need, there's kids out there that are lost and on their way to hell. Uh, their, eye, their, their brains are being filled with all these video games. Uh, and, all, and I'm not saying all video, but I'm not, I'm not preaching against video games. But they, we, we certainly have to, there's certainly an argument uh, that they are, they are taking over the brains uh, and the lives of young people today. And things Amen. in moderation can probably be all right and good. Uh, but I'll tell you what, they are, that's, that their lives, it's, it's school, games, uh, eat, and games and school, and it's just that's that's all they do, and they're not getting into a place where they can serve God. They're not getting to a place where they're uh, where they're growing up to some of these young men being men, uh, these ladies being ladies. Nobody's able to train them because they won't leave their couch, they won't leave their television. Hey, listen, we need to get out there on these bus routes and love these young people with all of our hearts. Yeah. Hey, Amen. We need to run these bus yeah. routes hard, all wholeheartedly. We need to knock those doors and be faithful in our personal evangelism with all of our heart. Regardless if anyone else goes with you. Regardless of the decisions that anybody else makes in this auditorium uh, tonight. Listen, regardless, we must be personally surrendered to serve God with all of our heart. Amen. Amen. The measure is everything. The mark is heartily. And then we see the, the third thing here. Lastly, we see the motivation. As to the Lord. As to the Lord. Again, this seems simple. Amen. I, it, 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 in, in the context and in the understanding, just defining the words, it, it is certainly the meaning is simple. But even the Apostle Paul had to clarify in this verse, and not unto men. Yeah. Amen. The only fruit that lasts is that which is done to the Lord. And when, when we serve in, in, in church, when we, uh, when we are faithful in, in our own personal lives and ministry, listen, our, our, our uh, change of behaviors for anyone or anything other than the Lord Jesus, that, listen, that service won't be fruitful and the behavior changes simply won't last. He is worthy and his worthiness motivates. Yeah. Amen. That, and that should be enough. Amen. Nothing, nothing that we do for the Lord, nothing, nothing uh, that we do for the Lord.
Lord because of the Lord is in vain. God will bless it. God will use it. He saved us from hell. Amen. That ought to motivate us. Our sins have been forgiven. And that ought to motivate us. Yeah. We have everlasting life. Dear brother and sister, that ought to motivate us. Listen, he, was, uh, we, he, he has promised us eternal life with him. Hey, that ought to motivate us tonight. He is almighty amen. God. Uh, amen. And in reverence, uh, we ought to be motivated by that wonderful truth. Imagine what the Lord could do and would be willing to do through our church and in our own personal lives if we would get back to a place of serving with that proper motivation. Listen, I, if you're serving to, to, to keep your preacher off your back, for one, it's not going to be that hard because I'm really not that aggressive of a, of a preacher. I've seen other pastors that are much more aggressive and micromanaging different ministries and and I'm not saying one's right or one's wrong. I'm just saying that's not my makeup. I'm not a micromanager. I'm not going to babysit you. I don't want to ask you every week until it's done. I, I like to be able to say, hey, brother, would you look? Or, hey, sister, would you look at this? And just know that it's just going to get done. Amen. I, I, just, I don't want to have to. I want God to work on your heart about that thing. And maybe that's, I don't know if that's the wrong. I don't think it's the wrong approach. Amen. Uh, but imagine what God would do and what would be willing to do through us uh, if, if we get back to a place of serving in a proper motivation. Hey, stop, stop serving because you're afraid somebody's going to call you and say, hey, you didn't do that. Listen, don't be serving because you're worried that somebody's going to say, hey, you know, I didn't, really, I didn't really like exactly what you did there. Because it's not about, it's not about the, 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 the pleasing of men. Right. 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 It's, about, it's about the glory to God. It's about heartily as unto Him, not unto men. Let me wrap this thing up tonight. Just very quick with a couple questions. Are, are you willing to surrender to God's measure? Amen. His expectation is whatsoever. I know that's a great expectation. But with that great expectation, it's going to come along with a wonderful enabling of the Holy Spirit of God. But we need to be surrendered to it. It's a big step. I understand that because it is so easy. Uh, it, it is sometimes easy just to play church. It's easy to just come in here and do just enough to get by. Nobody's on your, on your back about it. Nobody's breathing down your neck about it. But listen, would you let the Holy Spirit of God breathe down your neck about it? Amen. Would you let the Holy Spirit of God stir you up? Amen. It can mix you uh, like crazy. Amen. Today, it'd be a blessing to see the Holy Spirit of God just eat the lunch of God's people today and let them come to an old-fashioned altar and get some things settled with Him. Are you serving Him this year uh, with all your heart? Amen. Would you, uh, would, you, would, you, would you be able to hit that mark? Would you desire to hit that mark of, of uh, being, being heartily in your service? All wholehearted? And would you do all this to the Lord? Not unto men, not, not concerned about uh, the, the, the pleasures of men or pleasing men, but just doing it because that's what God deserves. Amen? Listen, He will, I believe that He will bless wholehearted service. If we're faithful, if we're doctrinally right, we're not doing things in sin or wrong, I believe the Lord will bless us, not because of our merits, not because of our, uh, our, our ability, but because we simply just were faithful and wholehearted in how we serve. I believe God will bless I want, to, I want to see that. I, I would love to see us have to add chairs. Not because of the. I don't care about bragging. I don't care. If anybody has known me for these last years, I don't care about bragging. I don't care about putting numbers on, a, on Facebook or anything. I don't care about any of that. If you know me, you know that. Amen. But oh, wouldn't it be a blessing to see some folks get born again? Amen. 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 Uh, we, we're going to pray here uh, in, in, in a couple weeks here. We're going to send our youth pastor out. We had a chance to send uh, the youngs out a little while ago. Uh, we prayed for the Fredericks as they took off into ministry. That's a blessing. But I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not content with just a few fellas leaving the church and going to serve God. Amen. Amen. How, wouldn't that be a blessing? Amen. Like once a year, maybe twice a year, we're seeing men of God going out with their families and going out in the mission field or going out uh, to pastor a church and just seeing God sending people through us. Listen, I don't have an overwhelming desire to pack this church where we have to build a second building. Oh, would it be a blessing uh, to see our church get so big that we have to send others out to start other churches. Amen. Because that's the New Testament. That's the New Testament. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. We just stand for it. I'm excited about this New Year's theme. I hope you are as well. I hope the Holy Spirit of God worked on your heart on some things in which you uh, can, can change or, or surrender to Him. Uh, but, you know, the, the next step is really, it is up to you. Uh, I don't know how God's worked in your heart, but I'd ask you, please, be thankful for the Holy Spirit to you tonight uh, with eyes closed and heads bowed. As Miss Betsy you finds her, she's finding something here. I didn't give her too much time, but she's going to find something. And so as soon as she begins to play, I'd ask you that you make your way to an old-fashioned altar.